back again with another Legion TD2 tier list. It's been months since I have done one, so we are going to do it once again because the game's always changing, buffs and nerfs. Um, so while I'm putting tier 1s into the D list, I'm going to talk about the units that aren't on here because they are new. Um, so the initial one was the Gatling Gun. I would put that into B and A, uh, just because it's a little difficult to always be able to use because of its placement, um, but still a pretty solid choice for 190 gold. Um, then we have what came next was the Sea Dragon, which is a healing unit. It's pretty solid, uh, but the problem is that it cannot heal itself, and every time that it does heal, it harms itself. Um, so you definitely have to watch out for that. Um, I'm just going to put this treasure hunt down here because it doesn't exactly count. Um, and then we have the Seedling, Chlora Pixie, and Sakura. Those are all okay, solid units um, as they go. It just kind of depends on how you want to play them. Um, sorry, I'm trying to look for these other tier ones. Um, but I would put, honestly, the Sea Dragon and Life Bender, um, that we were just talking about, probably in B and A as well. And then the Seedling go into Chloropixie and Sakuro. I would probably say C and then double B, depending on how you use them, because the Chloropixie... When it dies, it gives you um, Mythium for the next wave, or I should say the wave after. And then Sakuro, if you do it early enough, um, so long as it survives the wave, it gains um, permanent health and I believe uh, maybe damage or um, something of that sort. And then we have the Casket, who we also have missed. Um, that's a tier 4, I think, like 130 gold. But then what's interesting about them is that each um, upgrade is actually 100 gold, so it's less. So that's super interesting, and uh, it's a decently solid unit. Definitely good early game, but falls off very hard. Um, and then last but not least, the most newest is the Slime Larva and Slime Siren. So what happens is when they die, they then um, spawn more slime units. Um, and then obviously the more upgraded version has the ability to um, spawn more once it dies. So with all that being said, those are the ones that you aren't going to see in here but I will go over the rest. So again, the reason why I put, these are all tier one units if you're new to the game. Um, they're just, you know, very, they're even mediocre early game, but they obviously can upgrade into some good units, but uh, the lower they are, um, you know, the worse they're gonna be, and then up to tier six. So the only one that's not a tier one in this is Harpy. Um, she is a tier 2 unit, and I would say the definitely the worst tier 2 unit in the game, but honestly one of the worst in the game period in itself. Um, just not good overall. Um, let's see who we can see now. Uh, we'll do Lord of Death. I think Lord of Death definitely is an A tier unit for a tier 6. Um, definitely early game if you're starting off with um, cash out. To start him is a solid because he can hold three waves no problem. Um, and the fact that he spawns another unit is always helpful and that unit can stay alive if it's um, you know getting the final kill uh, hit. And then Hades, his upgraded version is definitely S tier. It's even you know more health, more damage. You're spawning a bigger and better unit and can definitely um, hold it all down very, very well. Definitely uh, a good pickup. And something that we will talk about a lot is magic and 
uh, arcane attack and defense. Those are the two best attack and defenses in the game. Magic being the attack, arcane being defense. So a lot of people are definitely um, used much more because of those two, uh, because they are the two best. So him being magic attack type and arcane defense type is just another uh, stake in the book. Uh, Mudman, I'm going to go B. There just are so many better tank units in the game than him. And honestly, the only reason he is in B is because of the fortified. If you can use it uh, well or choose it correctly and make it worthwhile, then it's solid. But there are so many better tank units in the game that are honestly even cost less than him. Um, and then I'll put Gollum, which is his upgraded version, into A. He does get an insanely more amount of health, and Fortified is still obviously available, but still, that's his main thing. If you can get the Fortified right and do it when you need to, it's super solid, super helpful, but if you don't or you don't use it enough, um, and if you use it wrong, the next wave after you have used the Fortified, he is weaker, so um, yeah, he's just... I would kind of steer clear, especially if you're a newer player. Definitely not. Um, they're just better tank options. Um, the egg. I have to put egg in C. Actually, uh, yeah, I'll put egg in C because it can survive a little bit in the early game. That's the only reason why you're going to use it. Um, but what it turns into are these hydras and the hydras are good but the problem is is that if your egg breaks um, and it takes two waves for it to open up and hatch into these hydras but if it breaks it does still break into hydras but the hydras are much much worse like insanely much worse than them um, so you definitely have to have a certain strat and be very careful with how you are running um, the egg uh, and we'll just go, the upgraded version of this looter is C. It is solid early game, but obviously definitely falls off because it's just an upgraded tier 1. Um, and this is actually his ability, which I'm not sure why there's a picture of it. But Treasure Hunt can get you Mythium, um, but that does actually take away the unit off the field for that wave while it's gathering the Mythium with the Treasure Hunt. So be mindful of that. Uh, Fire Archer... Uh, which is an upgraded ver one of the three upgraded versions of Bone Warrior. It's solid. I mean, if you need kind of like a helpful, um, low-cost boss killer, if you don't have any, or, you know, you're getting sent a lot of units that are, you know, being pushed at you, like fiends or brutes or turtles or something, this can be helpful in killing those a little bit faster, especially early game. And it's only 65 gold. So essentially 80 total dollars to get this unit because of the 15 stock and then 65 on top of that. It's alright, it's not going to win you any games or rounds, but it also does have built-in uh, health regen. So that's a super um, helpful aspect to it. And same with Bone Crusher, I'm going to put Bone Crusher in A, um, which is one of the other upgraded versions of the Bone Warrior, you can do one of three. The Bone Crusher is definitely one of the best early game tanks for its value, um, and it honestly is for a very long time. The only reason, honestly, it's not in S is because it obviously does fall off pretty hard uh, the later the game goes, but as far as early game, I would say it's arguably the best unit in the game early game, if not one of them for sure. Um, and again, especially for the value, I think he's 95 gold, so 110 um, gold just to start him, and he's going to hold a uh, health regen himself anyway. Definitely a solid choice. And then the other version that you can choose is the Dark Mage that I have to put in S. I think it is one of the best valued units in the game, um, and the entire game, honestly, um, no matter where you are, because it's only $80 to get the Dark Mage. So you're looking at 95 total dollars to get him. 
and he does have health regen so it's a little bit helpful in the beginning I mean as soon as somebody gets back to him he's pretty much gonna die especially 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 the later the game goes but what he does is he gives the highest um, attack speed unit even more attack speed so they're just gonna be attacking like crazy people and that is super helpful no matter where what place you are in the game um, and definitely worth it and then obviously the more of them that you have if you do place more than just one they're gonna just give it to more and more people um, or at least keep the one person consistently having it so he's definitely 100% worth the money um, him himself is not really gonna win you the wave but what he does for other units is definitely the I would say the best utility unit in the game especially for his value um, Aqua Spirit, I'm going to put in C, so it is kind of helpful in the beginning, especially because what uh, the Aqua Spirit does is bounce to another unit, so it's going to attack one, and then it, that attack bounces to another and does a little bit less damage. So it is very helpful in the beginning of the game, um, but because it's only 50 gold, it's not going to do anything too insane, um, but it is a little bit helpful. And w one of the two upgraded versions of him is Rogue Wave, which I'm going to put in B. Uh, the biggest reason I put him in B is what Rogue Wave does is allow other units' abilities to do more damage. Um, so somebody like um, Violet, which is the Windhawk, which we will talk about later, um, it shocks a bunch of people, so whoever is affected by the Rogue Wave splash um, will take more damage or somebody like um, Zeus's um, electrified shot and stuff like that it is helpful um, but nine times out of ten what I would rather have over here is the fire elemental um, to be able to bounce to multiple units and burn multiple units is so helpful um, and it's honestly worth the money especially early game um, and honestly later game depending on how many uh, units are left because what it will do is it will obviously bounce to those units that are in the back that might be causing you problems and kill them or at least do a high amount of damage to them um, which can obviously help you clear or get rid of those units later um, when they come so it's definitely worth the money to me especially early game honestly a solid start to the game as well um, but yeah and then so Nico Mata I have to put in B. Uh, the biggest reason why is so it has no upgrades. What you do is you feed it, and every time you feed it, it grows in health and damage. And once you get it all the way to its seventh tier of feeding, which is 30 gold each time, um, it can then heal itself if it gets the um, final hit for the kill. So early game it can definitely be helpful to keep itself alive um, and it's a solid unit being that it's arcane defense and melee attack so that can be um, another good factor for you to use and honestly it's nice uh, no matter what you're running mastermind wise uh, because it's only 60 gold but each upgrade for it is only 30 so it's nice if you kind of have like a weird amount of money you can just maybe throw some money into the cat and you know be on your way and it'd be useful um, butcher I would have to say is a tier for sure and then its upgraded version is s so what the butcher does is 150 gold but it can give life steal to up to six units around its aura so that is huge um it's it says it's a tank but it honestly dies pretty fast because its attack speed is so slow but the utility of the butcher and head chef is insane it's honestly probably the best aura in the game i honestly might put both in S tier because value for 150 and being able to um, you know give life steal to six other units so they stay alive even longer um, is honestly just 
so good, so worth it all the time. Um, Any time that I see a butcher, I'm pretty much picking it up unless I have absolutely destroyed my setup and placements of units. But even then, I'm still picking them up because that's only going to make them better. And he's a solid pick overall. Um, so we'll do Infiltrator next. I think is definitely a solid um, early game choice. Uh, 80 gold, magic damage, and swift defense. It's nothing too crazy, but you can also spend some money to give it him shurikens, so that can be helpful as well. And then I'm also going to put Orchid into A, which is this upgraded version, who you can also give to shurikens, um, and they obviously do good damage. And then he goes up to melee, so he throws the shurikens first, and then walks up and does melee damage if you have bought the shurikens for them. Um, but overall solid, honestly, there's nothing bad to say about them. Um, the only bad part is that, you know, it's only a tier 3 unit, so, you know, its value later the game goes goes down, but, you know, the upgraded version definitely uh, stays for a pretty decent amount of time. So, definitely overall solid, solid choice. Uh, Shefton, if you set it up right, it is S tier, so let's find the Pilgrim. Pilgrim I'll give B, so Pilgrim is the stock version of the Shefton. Uh, it's just a healing unit. Once it gets full mana, it heals and it keeps going. Magic attack does decent damage, can hold himself because he can also heal himself and others. Overall solid, not the best unit, but when you upgrade him, if you set your team up right and have your furthest, most front unit, um, just overall solid unit, you know, a tier 6 tank type player, then what the upgraded version of the Pilgrim, which is the Shefton here, does is give that unit X amount of health. I forget how much, but it's a pretty good amount. So if you build just a ton of Sheftons, that unit all the way in the frontmost spot is going to have an insanely more amount of health so it can definitely be a cheese way to play and honestly um annoyingly win you some at least clear some waves having that much um health and everything uh then we have the angler so the angler is interesting because what it does is you want to get it stacked so when a enemy unit dies either by him or around him um, he gets uh, stacks of mana, and what that does is give increase health and damage to the next upgraded version, which is the Bounty Hunter, which I will put in B. And then it's the same thing for the Bounty Hunter. So the more stacks um, that they get from killing or having a unit killed around them gives you more stacks and more um, damage and health for the next version, which is the Kingpin, which I'm going to put all the way in S. If you have a full stack Kingpin, whether you have lifesteal or heals or not, it does so much damage per hit. I think it's actually the most in the game. If not, it's the Millennium upgraded version per hit that does the most, but we'll get there. Um, but it is so worth it. It is just hard to make sure it's getting the stacks consistently. Um, and honestly, if you're using someone like Steed um, over here, and we'll put both versions up here, then that can, when she gives out mana to the other units, which is what they do, that mana counts towards that. So it's definitely worth it to try your best to get full stacks. So since we already put the Steeds up here, 80 gold, um, magic attack, arcane defense, so worth it, and I think this is 240 maybe for the upgrade, something like that. So what these units do is give mana to other units. If there is not another unit to give mana to, then it gives itself an attack speed boost for a few seconds. So it's overall just very, very solid for its value, and it's going to insanely help your team, especially if you have some mana-built units, you know, like the Pilgrim, like the Angler, um, you know, Holy Avenger, Proton, Disciple, a lot of the units down here, and some that are in here, you know, Hades and Lord of Death. Definitely 
one of the most useful and probably the best utility in the entire game. Um, Sky Queen, which is the upgraded version of the Harpy down here, is actually a very solid um, choice. Its attack speed is awesome, um, and it can definitely dish out a ton of damage, especially if it's getting mana boosted by a steed. Uh, but it is just a tier 2 unit, and by the time that the wave, if it ever gets back to the Sky Queen, it will be destroyed very easily. Um, so we're going to talk about Serpents next, and then the Decoiler, which is its upgraded version. I think they're definitely S tier units. And the only reason why I say that is because if you place them right, which is not hard to do, um, you're going to be very, very successful because they're very, very worth the value. So it's 90 gold for a ser sea serpent. What you do is you build your team, um, I would say, in the middle of the field and behind that, and then you build the serpents at the very, very frontmost line that you can. And what happens is when the wave starts, the serpents go underground, wait a few seconds for the wave to continue to walk past them and then come up out of the ground and attack from behind so if they if the enemy has sent you mercenaries like lizards like drakes cannons anything backline what it's going to do is come out of the ground and then eat it uh, or do damage to it, i should say and then you know slowly attack the wave from behind as well yes the wave will turn around um, or even the mercenaries will, you know, then attack the serpents. But it is so helpful, especially if someone is just auto-sending you. They're going to auto-send you a bunch of drakes just to get income. And if you have serpents, they're easily going to be taken care of. And you don't have to worry about getting to those units. Um, very much worth the money. And the deep coiler does a ton of damage, especially if you can get one on or before wave 10. It will totally help you do some heavy damage to uh, the wave 10 boss as well as any other person that's behind there so it's definitely worth it to me and it's 180 gold to upgrade that from the serpent and then we will talk about the okay so that's an atom and then this is a proton proton i'm honestly going to put into b it's weirdly good, especially in the beginning of the game, especially if it's also uh, boosted um, from a mana unit. Um, yeah, it's just uh, overall solid for its value, so it's, I believe, I don't know how much the upgrade is, honestly. It's less than 100 so overall you're getting this unit for less than $100 with stock and the upgraded version. I think it might be 70 or 90 for the upgrade, something like that. Um, but yeah, overall very, very solid. Um, solid early game, obviously. So Seraphin, I'll give to C and honestly devilfish as well so these are both the you can choose between these two of the upgraded version of this polywog um, it's going to be one of these two so the devilfish is the tank and the seraphim is the backline shooter um, you know again because it's a tier one going just upgraded it's okay in the beginning of the game but they obviously fall off very hard um, they are magic attack types, so that can be helpful um, to have those, especially early game, but, you know, you're not going to be amazed that you have a polywog on your team. Uh, Radiant Halo, I'll give B, and then its upgraded version, Arc of Justice, I'll give uh, A, honestly. So... The longer that both of these units attack a single unit, the more damage it consistently does. So it's definitely, arguably, the best boss killer in the game. Um, or just, you know, units that have a ton of health, like, you know, certain mercenaries and whatnot. But overall, it's not the best. Um, you know, it's worth the 200 gold and the upgrade for sure, especially if you know the game's going on a long time or you finally rolled to switch off. Uh, they're solid, but, you know, if you want, if you just need a straight-up boss killer, like, there you go, you got it, good job. 
um, but if you need like solid overall DPS for consistency, you know, you might not always choose Radiant Halo Arc of Justice Avenue. Um, Yazora. I have to put both Yazoras in S tier. Um, Yazora for 190 gold is arguably the best start in the entire game for sure. Tank, and you have a 20 to 30 something percent chance for an attack to be missed. Um, and then upgraded version, same thing, gets way more health and still has a chance for um, attacks against it to be missed. It's overall just super solid and it does pure damage, which means that it's just doing straight damage. There's no bad wave for it. Um, I actually think it might... No, she's swift actually for defense. Um, so yeah, so there is pure damage which is also Radiant Halo. So what pure damage is is that, you know, certain waves with Pierce and Arcane or Magic or Fortified, you know, they're better some waves and worse others. With pure, it's always just a solid base um, damage every time. Oh, who we got next here? Well, since both monkeys are next to each other, um, Banana Bunk, I would say is just kind of double solid um so it's a tank but it's actually a shooter tank so you kind of have to work around that it is very very solid and anybody that does do damage to the unit takes damage as well so that's super helpful um, but it's kind of hard to have that be like your solo tank um, compared to other ones that will just go up and hold for you or try to. But you definitely have to work around it and be careful. But it's value and the amount of damage that it's going to do, especially because people will take damage from doing damage to it, is definitely going to be helpful. Oh, we have a ton of units to go through still. All right, Gate Guard. And honestly, Cerberus doesn't make it that much better. Um, they 100 gold, 190 for upgrade. Um, they spawn a Cerberus dog. It does, you know, help a little bit. It definitely, you know, Gate Guard spam is still a thing um, in lower level ranks or even in classic play. But overall, it's just, you know, it's an okay unit, and the upgrade honestly does not make it that much better. It just, obviously, it gives it more health and damage, but not even a significant amount. And even the upgraded, you know, dog is just, like, not that much better. Um, regular Gargoyle, I can't really... I mean, I'll put it in B, and then honestly, I'm going to put Green Devil in A. Um, for a Tier 2 unit to have Magic Attack and then Arcane Defense, very, very solid. Green Devil can definitely hold. It's just a very good overall choice in unit, especially the earlier the game is. Um, so if you can or you need one of those types, it's definitely a good choice, especially, you know, early game tank. Uh, you got it right there. Uh, Oathbreaker, which is the upgraded version of the Chain Fist. Not that much better, so they bounce to units when they get below 50% health, but because they're, you know, tier 1 units, they have little to no health. By the time it gets there, it's not going to be super helpful. It's going to die very, very fast. Um... But not the worst um, early game to start Oathbreaker is not the worst choice in the world. Um, Consort, which is the upgraded Buzz, um, is actually a pretty solid choice overall. Definitely worth the money. And if you're running Fiesta, you can definitely start a Consort um, and it will Pro League for you technically. It'll be 25%, which is not a Pro League, but it will... Because of the poison, when it dies, it will kill that other unit. So 
you know, take it how you want it, but it's overall solid choice, especially early game, to be a little bit of a tank, and then, you know, once it dies, um, it obviously takes or gives uh, poison damage to the other units. Uh, who else can I see two of? I'm trying to make sure that I go um, in all versions. Let's see, I can see all the masks. So, mask to me, honestly, is trash. I don't like it. Um, it's a AoE attack, so it shoots multiple units. It's 25 gold, which actually I think is a tier 1, which is probably why it's down here. Um, and then, honestly, the... False Maiden to me is not much better. And the Hellraiser I'll actually put into A because it obviously does get good, but it's 25 gold, then 70, and then 120 or 125 um, to get that. It can do some pretty heavy damage, but it is AoE, so you have to be very careful with that in this game. Um, now, if it is helped by a Dark Mage or in a um, APS MPS area effect, then it is definitely worth it and can definitely deal out some insane amount of damage for you know being a tier one unit but to get there and to have those other things it definitely needs to help um so since we're talking about mps actually i think that's aps and then the upgraded version is mps i get the name switched but either way so what this does is uh, much like the butcher the area effect of it for your units is up to six for them getting attack speed so up to six other units around it can get an attack speed boost which is super helpful and i will actually put this one in s because once you upgrade it it actually does some pretty significant damage and again it's only 150 dollars just like the butcher um so it's definitely worth the value But, yeah, there's really nothing bad to say about it other than early game, it's kind of hard to uh, hold with it and make it the most useful. But definitely the upgraded version does a lot more damage and much more useful than the other version. So, let's see who we can see. Holy Avenger and the upgraded version, I have to put an S. Uh, tier 6 units, um, the more mana it gets and each kill it gets, it heals and then it goes to attack speed and then once it gets full mana, um, which also counts for, so it gets mana by attacking and being attacked. Once it gets full mana, it does like a slamming effect for a few seconds. Um, definitely worth the money. A lot of health, very solid amount of damage, and a very solid tank, especially if you have something helping it, whether it's Steeds, Butcher, uh, you know, Pilgrim healing it, or a Sea Dragon who you can't see on here, um, stuff like that. It definitely is going to just excel further and further and further uh, as the game goes on. Let's see, so then we have Warg. And honestly, I just have to put Warg in C. Warg itself is not a solid unit to me. Um, it's just not even worth the 85 gold, really. But both of its upgraded versions are Ooh. I'm going to have to put Lioness in S and then Alpha Male in A. So the Alpha Male is more expensive, but if it is around units that are also expensive, um, you know, you upgrade a unit, like, you know, you have a Mudman buy it, no problem, but you upgrade it into a Golem, it becomes worse, which is very hard to build around and not good for the Alpha Male, obviously. But with the Lioness, who is l less expensive than the Alpha Male, it's 175 gold instead of 200, the more expensive units that are around it, the better the Lioness becomes. Um, and it gains 
everything, you know, all the buffs to it. So it's definitely a fun and good unit to build around, um, and it's definitely worth it, but base warg is just not good, not good really at any time in the game. It can be okay in the beginning, you know, because it's the beginning of the game, but overall, you just really have to watch the value and what other units you have, if any, because it's base stock warg is not really worth, uh, in my opinion. Uh, Berserker, I'll put in B, solid boss killing unit. It's much like the Radiant Halo where, you know, the more attacks that it does to a single unit, the more damage it does to that unit consistently, so it's good at killing bosses and stuff, and it's not bad at killing other things, but, you know, that's where its value is placed, and, um... Fatalizer, I'm going to put an A. Uh, honestly, I was thinking about S, but really it's just, you know, again, solid, solid boss killer, but aside from that, like, it's uh, not always the best unit choice for actually clearing waves itself, but more, you know, helping kill a boss and that sort of effect. Um, let's see, Priestess. Priestess I have to put an A, and then Azaria an S. So what Priestess does is magic damage, arcane defense, super solid. It gains a mana every few seconds once it hits full mana. If it has full health still, it just increases its attack speed. If it does not have full health, it heals itself based off dam based off health that it's missing. So it can 100% keep herself alive, um, and especially with Azaria, to be able to hold when you have so little health as an Azaria, and she gets that mana hit again, and then is healing for, dam for the health that she's missing, has saved so many people's waves, not even mine all the time, but other people's where I'm like, dude, that... She should have died, but she holds the wave. Um, she is 100% worth the money. Um, and definitely, if you can have some other units help her out, you know, like Steed, like, um, you know, Disciple Upgrade and Butchers and stuff, it's uh, super worth it. Very, very, very much worth the moolah. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to see who all I can see, because I like to keep on with the same units. So, um, Eternal Wanderer is an overall okay choice, and its upgraded version is better. So what happens with Eternal Wanderer? 125 gold. Once the unit dies, it actually dies for just a split second, and then a second later it respawns itself or revives itself and comes back and actually attacks faster, but it does have the same amount of health, it just attacks faster once it comes back alive. But, you know, super helpful in, you know, essentially having two units out there. Um, and then the upgraded version, Samurai Soul, same thing. Obviously you get more health, more damage and everything, but once it dies, it does even faster attack speed once it revives, so it can definitely be a solid holding unit. Um, but because it's stock version until it dies during each wave, if it dies, um, is not always the most solid, you know, and then once it dies, obviously the wave continues on to attacking your other units, so that can honestly be harmful sometimes, so just be careful when building it and having other things. Uh, so Fire Lord, honestly I have to put in B, he's always been unimpressive to me, but Phoenix I'll put in S, so what happens is once it, it starts with full mana I believe, and then once it takes damage it gains mana and then it does more damage, um, but by that time it's just, you know, obviously the unit is getting better, but it's taking damage so it's getting worse and dies, so it's, kind of hard to be good, but the Phoenix, especially the later the game goes, is 
arguably one of the best tier 6 upgraded versions of any unit in the game. Um, yeah, it's just a very solid choice, but its stock version for a tier 6 unit to me is um, just unimpressive. Let's see who else we got. So the Peewee, I'll honestly put in B. So this is the upgraded version of the Peewee, which is the Veteran. Um, 90 gold for the upgrade. Um, arcane defense for a tier 1 is solid. And what's nice is that you can spend a little bit of money and actually boost them so they do more of everything. So it's solid to uh, have a little bit of extra money if you need some sort of boost um, or to hold. And definitely a solid early game unit, but nothing crazy because it's just a tier 1 version of this Peewee right here. So, take it as you will. Uh, Windhawk. Honestly, to me... Is B. Um, so it's the same amount as the Warg, and I almost put it in C, but... It's overall waves where it's double good is much more than the Worg in my opinion. And um, it's upgraded version of Violet, I would say is a solid A unit. So like I was talking about with the Rogue Wave, what Violet does once you upgrade her is it shocks all the um, enemies in front of her. So it can obviously be a bunch of units. Um, which is a very, very solid amount of damage, uh, especially early game can definitely wipe out waves quickly. Um, and if you have something like a rogue wave, then you obviously are doing more damage to those units. But overall solid choice, definitely 100% worth the value. The only downside is obviously it has to stay alive long enough for it to gain the amount of mana to um, use its ultimate. And then it can obviously keep using its ultimate so long as it keeps gaining that same amount of mana and stay alive that long, but, you know, again, got to stay alive to be able to do that. It's not always guaranteed. Um, Antler, I have to put an A, and then it's upgraded version, white main into S. Uh, Antler, 200 gold, very, very solid early game tank. It's going to hold for you. It's going to be good, and definitely make sure you're building good units around it, because once you upgrade it into the white main, um, its area effect gives up to six units, like every other thing. Um, uh, basically a defensive bubble. Um, so it's just more and more defense for those units that is built around the white main. So definitely um, make sure you know who and what you want to build around the antler. But it's overall a very, very solid um, unit to build around, unit to start. Uh, early game or have just in general on your team uh, for sure. Uh, Sand Badger, I'll put into A and then S as well. So this is your most expensive arcane tank essentially is the Sand Badger, 195 gold. Super solid, it's got a ton of health, uh, it's definitely going to hold for you early game especially, and when you upgrade it, it's obviously just going to insanely increase that amount of health, uh, but that's literally, like, if there is any tank in this game, it is the Sand Badger, alright, like, that, that is its purpose, is to just tank all the damage and hold and do its best to do that, um, other than that, it's not going to do a whole lot of damage for you. Um, but it will hold, you know, throughout the entirety of the game, especially once you get it upgraded. And that's, you know, without any uh, other things around it, like heals or lifesteal or anything. So definitely worth the money, but if you need a damage type tank, that's not what you want to look for. Uh, Soul Gates... I'll put both of them in A. They're not super special, little inconsistent because all they're doing is spawning units um, out onto the field for you. And while those units are actually pretty solid, um, there's just, it's way too inconsistent uh, for me to put any higher. And sometimes some of the other, so what it does also is once, it spawns unit every few seconds, but every 
time that it spawns unit, it loses health, and once it spawns, I think, five or six units, um, it then is destroyed, so that's all the units that you're getting, uh, which may either sound like a lot or not. It's kind of a little bit of both. Uh, it just kind of depends on where you are in the game and what the rest of your team is looking like. So definitely be careful. It is a tier 6, though. It is. It's not a bad choice, but... Be mindful of the rest of your team and how it's built and what is being built around it, should anything help it. Um, Golden Buckler, nothing interesting there. 50 gold, it's not really going to do anything. I think this is actually the Oathbreaker. Maybe not. I think I called this one the Oathbreaker. I'm not sure. One of them's the Oathbreaker. Um, I'll give it B, but it's not even that much more special, to be honest. It's just, you know, an upgraded version of that, which is better. Uh, it says it takes less damage from ranged units, but, I mean, not really. Uh, not enough to even see it, but it's it's a solid okay unit if you need a, you know, early game, uh, low-cost tank. It'll get you there, but it's nothing too insane. Um, Disciple, I'm going to give to A, and then Star Colors upgraded version into S. So Disciple is 195 gold. Um, it does decent damage, but once it, you know, keeps reaching its mana thing, it shoots out essentially a magic missile and does a lot of damage to the unit that it hits. So it's a very solid uh, backline damage unit. And then the upgraded version actually gives mana to all the six units that are built around it so if you definitely have some backline mana units um, or even some you know somebody like holy avenger or steeds or something that can be placed in front of her they're going to be continuously gaining mana regen uh, throughout their life of that wave and or the game so it's definitely worth a if you're building a mana team like you need a star collar basically that'll just insanely increase it and you can definitely build a ton of things around it whether it's protons and atoms or harpies or even you know anglers up to kingpin uh, so many units have mana in this game that you can definitely have uh, a lot of people or even a lot of star colors to where you have a lot of people built around them um, so since we're talking about mana we'll get into zeus in a second with Bazooka. Bazooka to me is just awful. It's probably up there with Harpy and the worst tier 2 units in the game. It's not going to do you much. It's barely an okay tier 2 unit in the early game. But its upgraded versions, which are Pyro and Zeus, I would argue are definitely A tier units. So Pyro is an area effect unit. Definitely, definitely a solid early game start, um, and you can push, especially if you're um, running classic and building with a teammate, but Zeus is definitely the one that you're going to see much, much more than Pyro uh, throughout the entirety of games, uh, so what, it, what Zeus does is get uh, basically an electrified shock shot. So every few seconds when it gets full mana, it shoots this electrified shock. Hits a unit, does very good damage for its value. It's 130 uh, for the upgrade and then 45 for the stock. Overall, very, very solid unit for its worth um, and can definitely help you win some games and rounds and everything like that. So nothing bad to say there. Uh, Ranger... Nothing really special. I mean, 55 gold tier 2 unit is not going to really do you any good outside the first few waves. Just even as a helper, it's definitely not going to do anything so much by itself. But Daphne, um, I would honestly say... Ooh, minimum A, I think I might throw it all the way in S. So what Daphne does is... Once she attacks a unit, it actually uh, marks it, so every unit that is still attacking that unit is doing more damage to that unit, or essentially that unit is taking more damage 
from all of its attacks. Super, super worth the money. It's only 125 gold to get Daphne plus 55 to pay for the actual ranger itself. But very much worth it. I mean, you only need one, but the more you have, you know, it's obviously backline unit. So as long as enough people can hold for it, it's going to very much do you some solid damage from the back line. Uh, Wild Shroom, I'll give honestly to A and then Canopy up into S. So, actually I think I'm going to have to take that down to B and A. So, with Wild Shroom and Canopy, they start with half of their health and what they do is as soon as the wave starts they start regening the health into full so if you can keep the wave off of them for a long time or even have units that heal them or anything they're going to have a ton of health and be difficult to kill but because they start the wave with half of their health it's very very hard to always get a consistency from them especially in the early game now they do have arcane defense which is great that's super helpful it's nice um, but you definitely have to sometimes be careful um, but for the value of 95 gold and then 180 for the upgrade they're very very solid uh, you can definitely argue that maybe canopy is an s especially if you have some healing units or some lifesteal or something um, but overall they are a solid choice. You're not going to be upset by them in the least. Uh, Honeyflower. Honeyflower, I'll go B and then A. So Honeyflower for new players. Uh, just run Honeyflower or Yazora or something. It's going to clear the waves instantly for you for AoE kill. Um... But as soon as the first like three waves are done with the honey flower, it's pretty much thrown out the window until you get death cap. Now death cap is a solid damage unit, but again it is AOE. Um, it is magic damage, so it's gonna be nice most of the time. But overall, AOE units are very inconsistent in this game, um, unless you have other units that are very good built around them, um, or you can keep these units alive long enough for the AoE to consistently do enough damage to kill the wave. Not the worst choice, definitely good early game, but be sure to build around it and then um, upgrade it ASAP to make it continuously worth the money because it will not be very quickly. Um, definitely not always the best choice there at all. Uh, Nightmare I'll give B and then Doppelganger A as well. So Nightmare is a super fast attacking unit with high damage but very little health. Um, it's 185 gold. It's going to really dish out some damage and definitely if you have a Busher lifesteal around it, once you get Doppelganger 2, um, it's going to, the amount of attack speed and damage that this unit does is insane. But if it gets attacked, it's going to die very quickly. So you have to be careful and make sure that it is uh, protected as best as it can be. Obviously, sometimes you can't affect who the wave attacks after it kills a unit. But so long as you it doesn't get attacked, it's going to just literally cut down the wave very quickly for very good value. And definitely very much worth it. Uh, Tempest for... 90 gold honestly is a C for me. I've never been a fan of it. It's not that great. Um, it does do a little bit of area effect um, damage as itself, but it's not amazing. And honestly, the Leviathan, which is its upgraded version, which has an AoE for flying units only, um, it can be okay. It can be useful for 190 or 180 upgrade I think but there's just much better units out there and honestly there's not that many flying units in the game that are worth upgrading I mean the best one is honestly probably Violet um, I think maybe some masks count 
if I remember right, or like Radiant Halo and stuff, but overall there's just like a lot of the flying units are going to be, you know, essentially tier 1 and tier 2s that fall off, so just be very mindful and careful about that. Um, Boar and the upgraded Red Eyes. Tier 6 tank units, but the problem is is that they're only good if you start them all the way in the very, very, very back of the lane. Um, and then what they do is they run up and charge and gain mana as they're running, so the longer they run, uh, the more mana and damage they're going to do. Once they run into the wave and smash into them, they're going to do a solid amount of damage. So they are solid, they are good, but you definitely have to build your team around them and place units specifically in ways to make them successful and that's not always viable especially if you roll into them um, so definitely be careful with that Millennium um, I'll put into this is difficult I'll put into A and then S for the Doomsday. So, tier 6 unit, backline tank, not tank, but like it's actually a tank, you know, like a military tank, if that makes sense. Um, does a good amount of damage, but then if it kills a unit with its attack, it actually kind of like explodes around, so it can do more damage to other units around that unit, so... It's definitely good, it's definitely a solid, it's a single shot, not one single, but each shot is just one um, missile, so it's definitely a very good boss killer as well. Um, nothing bad to say about it, it's just, you know, not always the most useful unit in quick killing, we'll say that. Uh, Grarl? So Garl's whole thing is that you can sell him for 90% of his value at any point in the game. So once these units are placed and a wave goes, you can sell them, but you're going to only sell them for like, you know, a certain percentage of the value that you bought them. But with Garl, you can sell him for 90% of that through the entire game, which is great and definitely helps you sell him into getting a tier 6 unit or something like that. Um, and he's honestly not a solid... He is a solid... Sorry. Uh, 145 gold tank, you know, early game. And then he goes into a King Claw and Ocean Templar, whichever you decide. So King Claw is just um, a bigger, better version of a tank that has a slam down area effect damage. And then Ocean Templar actually gives um, magic resistance, I believe, or something like that, uh, to the units that is built around it. And it is then a backline unit and actually does have health regen to itself um, should it need it. So it, there, it's a solid unit, but overall, Grarl and both of its upgrades are just overall lackluster. It sounds great, but it's just not the best. There are better tanks, there are better useful backline damages, that are, there are better useful upgraded versions to getting AoEs, there are better AoEs in general. Solid, but not always the first or best choice. And then last but not least we have Elite Archer. Um, Elite Archer is an AoE effect Super solid, but nothing super crazy. 145 gold. Um, but the Trinity Archer, especially if it has any upgrades, is disgusting. One of the best backline units to smash out damage. Um, yes, again, the AoE is not always the most effective in this game. But if you can hold for a pretty good amount of time, that Elite Archer is going to dish out so much damage that it is very much worth it, especially if you have, you know, APS or MPS or Dark Mage or even, you know, Butcher to keep it alive so it can keep doing damage. Um, 
So yeah, let me know what you guys think about this Legion TD2 tier list. Again, these are not all of the units that are in the game currently, which is in November of 2022. Um, there is, again, the Gatling Gun, the Sea Dragon, the Seedling, uh, the Casket, and uh, Slime. So keep those units in mind. And again, mostly all of those units are in the B or higher. Nobody's really... I would say Seedling because it's only, I think, 50 gold. That unit in itself is, you know, C or D. But other than that, and the Slime actually kind of, but... Other than that, let me know what you guys think, where you guys would place, what you guys think of where I placed some of these units. Um, and obviously, all of these are bound to change. I know my other tier lists don't look exactly like this either, but, you know, between buffs and nerfs and uh, where some of the people lie, this is about where I would say people are at at this point in the game. So thank you guys for watching, and we will catch you in the next one.